smell like last month's breakfast somewhere, and it's time for you to, you're running, you, and please, I need a shower, somebody help me here. I know I stink, and, I, and I'm not happy with myself. I, I'm not pleased with this, and I want, please, I need a shower, somebody help me, I need a shower. And we know that we, we, we have this contamination called sin from the world that comes on us. And, and we know we don't like the stench of it. We don't like the smell of it. We don't like the effects of it. It wars against your soul and your spirit. You are quick as you can. You want to get to the church. You want to get to the family of God. You want to get to an atmosphere of worship and praise unto God where your soul can be showered down of the cleansing presence of Christ and wash you with his holy water. The blood and the water that came out of the body of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. Amen. Not necessarily, and as it does, it cleans your heart out from sin you may have committed or sins you've omitted. It's still the sin of omission, but also it cleanses you from the contamination. It's a, a, Diane, Diane has a small little two, three ounce sanitizer. And uh, a long time ago, I kept asking her, did you bring the sanctifier with you? <laughs> I don't call it sanitizer. I call it sanctifier. <laughs> I like to get my hands sanctified before I touch my foot. <laughs> and she's very specific. Do not sanitize or sanctify until you're done using the spoons and stuff and utensils out there in the buffet line. Then you come on. She's very specific about that. It's all right. Sometimes I stop it. Yes, mother. <laughs> so then after I've touched it all, I said, I need the sanctifier now. So you've got to go back to your person. I didn't touch my food. Are you getting this? I mean, how many are glad that they've invented sanitizing? Amen. Stuff? Are you glad they invented that? You remember that dial soap advertisement I used to have years ago? Aren't you glad you used dial? Don't you wish everybody did? Oh, yeah. You remember that was the selling line on the dial soap commercial? Yeah. Aren't you glad you used dial? And you know what they've done with dial? To save money, it took all the perfume out. All the fragrance to take it out. All you have now is soap. There's no, there's no, no smell and there's nothing anymore. Now I'm not glad I used dial. I forget about it. Because it's not leaving you with a nice scent. <laughs> forget about it. And, and so, so what we're saying here today, when you come to the church, it's a place of cleansing. Worship cleanses you. That's why David also was so anxious and so eager to get to church. Because he know, knows at that point he can be showered down the glory of God into his life and wash it clean. The word, how many know the preaching of the word cleanses your heart? Amen. When you're worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth, it has a cleansing effect right. on your heart. When you come to the Lord's table, it has a cleansing of, uh, effect on your heart and life. Everything that we do here at Calvary Community Church is to provide a place for uh, is, and moral and spiritual sanitizing is called sanctifying, setting you apart for the things of God. So he says here, your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in the truth. In verse, uh, verse 4, I have walked in the truth. Is that what it says? Verse 3. Uh, verse 3, yeah, I have walked in the truth, yeah. And verse 4. I have not sat with my daughters from home. In other words, he's saying, I have not initiated, nor have I participated in these things. Nor will I with it, right? I have hated the assembly of the evildoers, and I will not sit down uh, with these people. In verse 6, I will not sit down with what? With the wicked. I will wash my hands. How many feel this morning? It would be good if the Lord sanitized you spiritually and, and washed your hands in innocence today so that we can go about the altar. Amen. That good, Brother Charlie? That's good. So we can feel okay at the altar, Amen. our altar of worship, our altar of faith where you can trust God without hesitation. Yes. He that tries to hide his sin will not prosper. But if you expose it, confess it, you'll be healed. 
So go about your altar. And this is where we're getting to right now after this message. Watch now, listen very closely. We have two tables that we serve bread on. And then we're going to close the service as far as the message is concerned. We have two tables that we serve the bread on. Get the image of this. <clears throat> I am now feeding you the bread of life in the preaching of the word. Is that correct, Pastor Stan? Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm feeding you. What how do I know about the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So while I'm preaching, I am feeding you the bread of life. And you're eating it. How many glad we put a little strawberry jam on there this morning? Clean you up and give you a good sense of God. <laughs> put, put, put something on that slice of bread. Sanitize your hands first. And sanitize your hands first, yeah. And so you're, you're, you're the, for the last 40 minutes or so, you've been eating from the, the, the eating the bread from the table of the Word of God. Amen. In a few moments, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Here you're feeding from the Word of God, the bread of life that comes out of the mouth of God. In a moment, you're going to be eating the bread, which is Christ's flesh, His body, and His blood. That is bread of life. Jesus said, if you eat of this bread, you'll never hunger, and you'll live forever. Are you getting that? So we have bread from two different tables. We have bread from the word, word of mouth, comes out of the mouth of God, that feeds the soul, instructs you in righteousness. Then you have the Lord's table. We said, this is my body, so that you're actually eating life and you're drinking the cup of blessing. How many appreciate that this morning here Amen. at Calvary? Amen. Amen. We're going to have a healing service this morning from the communion. So then during communion, I will call those of you up. I'd like to come in front if you can. I'd like to anoint you and pray for you. And um, let's, let's just believe God. Right? Before we do, before we go to that, to, we're going to be praying here in just a moment. Watching by YouTube or listening by CD. Or if you're here today, You might feel like you need a, a spiritual shower, a spiritual cleansing today. And I want to include you in my closing prayer. I want to make sure that what's tried to contaminate, tried to war at your soul would be abolished, would be removed, and you'd be sanctified from these things, whether you participated in it or not. Just the fact that you're surrounded by of these things in this world, rubbing elbows with sin and sinners. I want to ask the Lord to cleanse you today in a very special way. And I want you to accept by faith the cleansing so that you can feel in your heart that you're accepted of God, that you're forgiven by the Holy Spirit and by, by the blood of Jesus Christ, that God accepts you. Do you know that so many people have believed that they've been forgiven by God, but they're not able to forgive themselves. Amen. Did you know that? There's a lot of people that have a hard time forgiving themselves. I was talking to a brother earlier this week. How do you know the Bible says that if, when we confess our sins and God forgives us of the sin, He throws the sin into the sea of forgetfulness, right. never to be remembered against you again. So I told this brother this week, I said, if you bring up your sin before God, He's going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Amen. I, I, I don't know what you, I don't know the point of reference here. Amen. What are you talking about? Well, you remember that sin that three years ago, five, five, ten years ago? God will say, I don't know what you're talking about. It's in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought up against you. Never to be used against you for destruction or for punishment. I'm very glad this morning that Christ took on the punishment of our sins Amen. so that we can receive from Him forgiveness completely. If you
you want, if you close your eyes right now, bow your head. If you want me to include you in this closing prayer, say, Pastor, I'm raising my hand. Please include me in your in your prayer. Thank you throughout this room. Blessings upon each and every one of you today. I pray that God is, is just going to do what needs to be done in your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, these lovely people that today come before your presence. And David gave us such a tremendous, beautiful insight when he talked about, examine me, try my heart, see if there be any wicked way in me because your loving kindness is ever before me. And Lord, you examine us on the basis of your loving kindness, not your, on the basis of judgment. Christ has already been judged. He's already been sentenced and he died. But he rose again so that we won't have to be uh, put down, as it were, and punished up by death because of our sins. Christ already took on that punishment for us. <clears throat> so Lord, whether it's a sin of commission, sin of omission, or a mere contamination, the things of this life, oh Lord, that surround us. Sometimes it's in our very own living room, our own bedroom, Lord. Sometimes it comes in through computers. It comes in through internet. It comes in through Facebook. It comes in through texting. It comes in through any way it comes in, Lord. We need to clean our homes and clean our houses of these things. It's hard enough living for God and endeavoring to walk a life in a life that's pleasing to Him without welcoming and inviting these things into the house. And so, Father, today for these beloved saints who are asking, Lord, right now that you would wash them now in the name of Jesus by the, this wonderful cleansing water that flowed from Jesus' side. Because the Word of God tells us not only blood flowed, but the water flowed. We pray, Lord, that right now, right now, they would feel the cleansing power and the washing of water in their souls, washing them clean today, right now. Forgive us where we have failed ourselves. And Father, simply, the things that we've seen, we've heard and experienced this past week, any contamination, Father, we just allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse us right now, to cleanse us, purify us before God. May we not sit ever in the counsel of the ungodly. May we not walk with hypocrites. May we not participate in deeds of unrighteousness and sinful ways. But today, may we walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Today, right now, we accept the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from all sin. And Lord, we, we put our withered hand in your hands. We expose it to you, Lord. We open it right to you, Lord. We give it to you in Jesus' name. Heal and cleanse, Lord. Make that hand whole once again. Let it be normal. Let our lives that have been crippled by sin, let it be normal again. In Jesus' name. Give strength to the weary. And may we walk tall in the satisfaction that all is good with God. We accept it and we thank you, Father, for the gift of forgiveness, for the gift of redemption, and for the gift, Lord, of a cleansed heart and soul. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. Let us stand.